Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. I have a really good video for you today, which is on exposure. We're going to go over our exposure modes, how they work. Also, the metering modes, which are super important that you're choosing the right ones. Speaking of the right, we need to make sure that we are shooting to the right. What does that mean? A lot of people say it. You might have seen it here or there, but what does it mean? We're going to talk about that a little bit today. And uh, before I get into it, let's talk about uh, a couple of related videos that I have. First one is my exposure compensation video, which you can click over to, as well as my bracketing video. Both are excellent videos that uh, give you a lot of detail on those particular subjects. I have another video that uh, I talked about why you need perfect exposure in digital photography. A little bit of a controversial post but it talks about why, basically, like it says, why you need that perfect exposure in order to maximize your dynamic range. So make sure you check out that video once you've already looked at this one. So exposure, what is it? Well, first thing, correct exposure is really dependent on what the photographer wants to create. If you want to create something that's underexposed by five stops, and then you want to take it into Photoshop and you want to do all kinds of funky stuff to it and you want to make it really noisy, then you know what, that's your, uh, that's, that's what you want to create, then you know what, that's fine, that, that's great. That's the great thing about photography is, is that everything can, everyone can create something different. But if you are like most people, most photographers, especially if they want to make a living in photography, then you want to be able to maximize your dynamic range of the camera. The dynamic range is basically the, the number of shades of color from your darkest blacks, your darkest darks in the shadows, all the way up to the brightest whites. You want to get as much data in that file as possible. If you don't expose properly, use the right modes, the right settings, have the camera uh, going, set up the right way, you're not going to achieve that at all. One other thing that I will mention, I have another really good video, and actually I think it was my second video, was my histogram video. That is super, super important to know how to use your histogram, and in fact it references it in the camera manual on a number of times that you should be using it. It's there, you should be using it. Alright, so uh, default method should always be shoot to the right. What does that mean? Shoot to the right means you're pushing that data over to the right side of the histogram. And uh, again, if you look at that histogram video, you'll be able to get a little more information on it. What happens is, is the data is in a graph, and that graph then shows you where it's at. You don't want a flat spot on the right side of the histogram. That's typically bad, so you want to try and stay away from that. Overexposure is when you have that data pushed way too far over to the right side. You are clipping highlights, you're removing data, you're losing data in your brightest whites. That's a bad thing, obviously, unless that's what you want to create, but for the most part we're going to talk about the normal exposures, the normal pictures that we want to, uh, we'll be creating. So uh, overexposure, that's typically bad, and again you're going to be losing data in the whites. The opposite side of that is underexposure. You're going to have that flat spot on the right hand side instead of the peak. The, high, the overexposure is peak on the right, the underexposure is flat spot on the right. And so that's where you're actually underexposing by one, two, three, four stops. And then when you go to compensate for that, you actually end up bringing that exposure slider back over and you end up with more noise, more grain than you know what to do with. And that is a bad thing. You end up losing dynamic range which means you don't have as much data, as much color, as much saturation than you would like in the photo. So we just learned what over and under exposure do and how they can be bad for our photos. So let's start programming our camera with our exposure modes. First thing we'll learn is not to use program mode. I think that's pretty obvious as to why. The camera's gonna make all the decisions for you, which is not a good thing when you're trying to learn your photography. Bad, bad, just stay away from it, don't use it. Simple, end of subject. Next one, shutter priority. Shutter priority is when you set your, sh set your shutter speed. To set, set, yeah, that's it. <laughs> set your shutter speed, and then your aperture will automatically go up and down depending upon the amount of light. And so you can use that once in a while. Not a big fan of it. Uh, what I actually prefer to do is to use the aperture priority mode 
and then um, that way I can control my depth of field to get my shallow depth of field, separate my subject from the background, and then I can take my uh, ISO and raise it high enough to make sure that I don't have a problem with a slow shutter speed, especially if I'm shooting some kind of sports. So that's typically my method, and you might try it out if it works out for you. Uh, I'm just not a fan of shutter priority, so I rarely use it. Next one is manual mode. Manual is just that, full manual. Uh, you set your shutter speed, you set your aperture, and by the way, through all of these modes, you should also be setting your ISO. That is very, very important not to use auto ISO, and here's a video explaining why. Next, we need to talk about metering. How does that metering thing work? There are three primary metering modes that you need to understand. And so the first one is your matrix metering or evaluative. I can barely say that sometimes, evaluative in the Canon. So in that matrix mode, that camera is actually taking into account everything in the viewfinder. And so that's a good thing most of the time. It even says in the camera manual that most situations you should be using evaluative or matrix, whichever one. So that is the way you want to go. Most of the time, you should be on that matrix mode. Pro I say probably at least 90%, maybe even more, you should be on that mode. All right, the next one is center-weighted. Center-weighted metering, what it does is it takes a variable size circle in the middle of the viewfinder to determine exposure. So in other words, the center part of that, of that frame, uh, you can vary that size depending upon uh, the camera, sometimes you'll be able to change it from like, I don't know, I think it's like 25, I don't know the numbers exactly, but each camera is going to be a little bit different. Read your camera manual in order to learn how to do it. Basically what it does is it takes 75%, uh, it basically weights the center of that circle for 75% of the exposure and then 25% outside of, the exp of that circle. Now a good example is actually this photo. You can see it's very heavily backlit. The, but the person is running toward me is actually in shadow and so it's a good time to use that center weighted since she is definitely already going to be in the middle but it's still going to give me a good all-around exposure taking the consideration that she is in shade. The last metering mode is spot. Spot metering means it's going to just take close to a hundred percent of its metering from wherever your focus point is and in most cameras today that, fo that spot metering does indeed follow your focus point. Now, you need to be really careful with this and you should not be using it for the majority of your photos. And in fact, something that I've noticed, a trend that I've noticed, is that people will forget, leave their cameras on spot, and then they can't figure out why their camera is over or under exposing all the time and their exposures are not, uh, what's the word I want to say, um, probably consistent is probably a good way to put it. It's not consistent and it's not giving them the same exposure or the same image every time, especially when they're in, say, an aperture priority mode. So it's, it, I, it usually ends up coming back to that spot problem. So what's the problem with spot? Spot is good for some things, it's not good for others. In this particular image, it was the perfect way to go, although I don't know that I used it. <laughs> uh, it would have been the perfect way to go, to put that spot right on his face to get a good meter right off of his face and I would have been done and off to the races on to the next photo. But what actually happens sometimes is that spot, if it moves up and down slightly, say it would move into the shadow area or on a dark piece of clothing, say the person was moving or whatever it is, or maybe you're moving your camera, maybe you recompose slightly, whatever it may be what ends up happening is the camera takes it into account. So you're gonna, for the same scene, say me sitting right here, you're gonna get one metered exposure off of my face and you're gonna get another metered exposure off of my dark blue shirt. That's a problem, because it's the same scene, it's the same lighting, nothing is changing. So that's why you need to really be careful with spot metering, all right? So just, uh, I just can't stress it enough. Be careful with it and don't use it most of the time. Stay on that matrix metering check your camera, go and check it right now. That's your homework. Right now, I want you to go and I want you to check that metering mode to make sure you're on matrix, center weighted, whatever it is for your Canon, your Pentax, your whatever camera that you have, your Nikon, hopefully you're shooting Nikon. Anyway, the final thing that I'm gonna leave you with is make sure you are checking your histogram. 
Histograms are super important to exposure. I cannot stress it enough. There are plenty of people out in the industry that, uh, especially here on YouTube, who don't understand how things work in their camera and they just say, oh no, uh, don't use it, don't use it, because they don't understand it. And so the histogram is super important and it is the primary one that people will kind of poo poo and say, oh no, you don't need to use it, I can just do this and this and this. Well, no, you need to use it. And the reason being is, the number one reason, is that it's gonna give you optimal exposure. It's the only thing you're, you're gonna be able to really tell 100% to know whether that exposure is right or whether it is wrong. Because when you're outside, you look in the back of your screen, just like the screen on your phone, it's tough to really see it. Versus indoors, it might look better, it might look perfect. That same exposure might look absolutely perfect. Well, in order to get an accurate reading and an accurate, uh, dis make an accurate decision on whether that image is under or overexposed, you have got to look at that histogram. So click over to this histogram video, take a look at it, excuse the intro, it was the, the second video that I had done since I started my own thing, which is, uh, um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. So anyway, questions, comments, concerns, I would love to hear them. In the meantime, send them over, Greg Cazillo, cazillo.com, keep shooting, thank you. See ya.